Hello and welcome everyone. It's Morgana here today and in this demonstration I'm going to show you a really easy, simple 10 minute technique to create this beautiful bright sky with lovely sun rays. My colours are on the screen. I will leave a comprehensive equipment list uh, in the description below. I'm beginning today with a plain sheet of paper that I've taped to my board at a roughly 45 degree angle and I'm using my water spray to wet the, uh, the top two thirds, I'd say between two thirds and three quarters of the paper. And I'm using a large wash brush to start bringing in some color. I've chosen a lovely gray today. This is in order to make those lovely sky beams that I'm going to show you stand out. Uh, this is a grey I've mixed up using cobalt blue and burnt umber, but of course use whatever colours you wish. I'm just using this lovely big brush to start filling in the sky. You can see that I'm leaving a patch roughly um, two thirds of the way up. This is going to be the uh, part of the clouds that the sun is peeping through. So I'm bringing my colour down almost to the bottom of the paper and just making it paler as I go down, starting to bring in a little darker colour around the top because I want uh, these clouds to show up a little darker around this lovely patch of sunlight we're about to create. I want lots of lovely texture in the sky for this, which is why I'm doing these big sweeps with this lovely big brush. This is a De La Rowney Aquafine Skyflow brush, and I think you'll agree with me that it really lives up to its name. Just as simple as that, just dotting in these lovely dark colours on this grey wash, where it's already nice and wet, you can see the colour is already diffusing down, getting these lovely soft lines, Ooh, bumping the camera as well. <laughs> Um, but this is the beginning of our lovely grey sort of storm clouds here. You can see I'm still leaving this white patch. I've dotted some darker colours along the underneath. These are going to be the clouds that our uh, sunlight is bursting through over. And I'm uh, leaving the top part around this white patch um, quite clean. I'm going to go back and soften it later. But for now, whilst this sky is still lovely and wet, I'm adding in some extra grey, just darkening it down and introducing the, uh, the silhouettes of those lovely clouds a little bit clearer. I'm using a soft uh, synthetic mop brush for this, but of course use any brush that you're comfortable with. Uh, you can see how quickly I was able to just throw that on and get this sky starting to come together. Now, of course, you could do a beautiful summer blue sky if you wanted, uh, or any, any sky really. Um, I chose grey today because I'm hoping it will make this lovely uh, burst of sunlight stand out all the more against uh, a dark and gloomy sky. And it just goes to show that um, the grey skies can be beautiful as well. It doesn't always have to be a bright spring or summer's day. So now all I'm doing is dry brushing along the bottom here, bringing a little of that grey colour down to just uh, start putting in the foreground whilst we've still got that lovely colour sat on the brush. Just a few quick sweeps with this sky float brush. I'm just using the tips of it to sweep across and dry brush in the foreground and now just using it flat to start putting in a little bit of distant land. Going along that horizon line and then bringing it a little further down not filling in all of the white space. We want to leave a good chunk of white there because it's going to echo our lovely white space from the clouds above. So just using a tissue here to pull out a little bit of paint along the tops of those clouds, just to uh, enhance the idea that the sun is glinting beautifully 
off the top of them, just peeping over from this lovely white space we've left here. And now I'm just going to soften this top edge. I'm using again my lovely soft mop brush and clean water. It's important that you use clean water for this. You just go over and scrub in that edge there with the clean water, soften it down and then use a scrunched up piece of tissue to pull the paint out and you get this lovely soft transition between the paint and the uh, unpainted white paper which is going to uh, which is going to be our lovely uh, space where the white where the sun sorry <laughs> where the sun is showing through and here are our sun rays we do this whilst the sky is still wet I've folded up a piece of tissue here so it's more uh, manageable and usable and as simple as that just start drawing it down pulling a little bit of the paint out so we get back to this white of the paper in a nice directional way just keep going until you're happy keep turning the tissue so you're using a clean part every time and it's as simple as that <laughs> doesn't that almost feel like cheating <laughs> Just a really easy, simple way to get this beautiful effect. The sky is looking really gorgeous. So all I'm going to do now, again with this nice big brush, is to dot it along the foreground here, bringing a few extra dark tones and to just put a little bit of detail into this foreground. I don't want too much as the sky and the light is the, uh, the focal point for this particular painting. Um, but it is nice to have uh, a little bit of dark in the foreground just to provide uh, some contrast. For this I am introducing now some Payne's Grey into the mix. Uh, the lovely grey that I mixed up before with the cobalt blue and the burnt umber. You can see the slight blues and browns splitting out of the grey there, which is why I used that rather than a pre-made grey. Um, I enjoy the, uh, the way the colours pop out sometimes and give a little extra interest to what would otherwise be quite a, a dull grey painting. <laughs> uh, but now I am introducing a true grey, uh, Payne's Grey into this foreground and just whilst these dots are wet just using the fan brush here with its lovely splayed out bristles to just draw some of the paint up and create a little bit of uh, grassland texture. And now just for an extra little bit of interest in this foreground, I'm putting in uh, some careful reeds and grasses, little tufts here and there. This is a sword or a dagger brush, it's also known as, that I'm using here. Uh, it's a synthetic one from Pro Art, uh, and it's very, very lovely and versatile. Because I'm using it now to introduce uh, a lovely tree here onto the uh, right hand side of the foreground. You can see it holds a decent amount of water so I'm able to get these lovely long lines which of course you could get with a mop brush or a rigger brush. I decided that uh, I wanted this tree to look as though it had withstood a hundred <laughs> years of wind and rain as this is such a lovely stormy grey sky that we've got going on here. So I've painted it leaning very much to the left like those beautiful wind-blown hawthorn trees you often see. Uh, around the south coast of the UK and they always have this wonderful directionality in their branches. They look as though they've stood for a hundred years battered by winds and rain and will probably stand for a hundred more. <laughs> I'm sure they'll outlive all of us. 
So I'm just using these little directional strokes to create the branches here, not being too careful, but being quite quick and trying to be quite spontaneous and mimic the, uh, the natural way that the tree would grow. And now all I'm doing is using the extra colour left on my brush to uh, darken this ground down a little bit. Just Payne's grey here dotted along. You can see where it's wet, it's diffusing in beautifully and giving this lovely uh, sort of well, wistful shape of the, uh, of the land here. There's little darker spots where perhaps some uh, extra bushes or, or some extra tufts of grass have sprung up. And now for the finishing touch, <laughs> I did say to myself that I wouldn't put any birds in this picture uh, because of this lovely stormy sky we've created. But I thought uh, just to balance it out because we've got that tree on the bottom right, I'm just throwing three birds in, just scaling up the left hand side up to the top corner, flying before the storm perhaps. And here we are with the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Um, I love this little easy 10 minute trick. See, I promised you it would only take 10 minutes. <laughs> you get this lovely light coming down from this break in the clouds. I really hope you enjoyed watching. I certainly enjoyed painting it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, please also consider joining me on Patreon if you're interested in more videos like this. Uh, so thank you all and uh, I hope to see you all again in the next video. So bye for now.